Hello, uh, my name is Joan and I've been fixing up this old Hoosier cabinet and I'm trying to keep my phone horizontal so that I can get it on the shot. There's my cat, Franklin. Um, so yeah, I have been redoing this Hoosier cabinet for the whole month of February as a surprise for my mom who's been away on a trip. And I wanted to film this because I have not found another Hoosier cabinet in the world that looks like mine. And I'm just curious to know if anyone out there in the world has one of these exact cabinets um, and who may have a little history on theirs. I thought I'd just do a little update of what I've done and the facts I know about this Hoosier cabinet. So this Hoosier cabinet has a placade on it right there. Oh, there it is. Um, and it says, May 15th, 1906. So it's very old. Um, Hoosier cabinets started to become really popular after the turn of the 20th century. And um, this, from what I understand, is a very early version of what became Hoosier cabinets. Um, it is 100% oak and except some of the internal shelves don't seem to look like oak, I wouldn't know, I'm not a wood specialist, but um, yeah, I've done all of the work myself. I work full time, so I've done this on the weekends, after work, whatever, and I probably have 30 to 40 hours of manual labor and like research in the cabinet. So yeah, this cabinet is from 1906, Hoosier, probably made in Newcastle, Indiana, um, we bought this piece. It was in incredibly bad shape and we paid like, I don't know, $150 for it. It was way too rough of shape. Um, but basically it was being kept in a moist auto mechanic garage out in the country. We bought it, um, Southwest Ohio. Um, and, oh, there's my cat on the table. And, um, yeah, it was in very poor condition. It, the whole bottom of the piece was covered in grease. Um, and I don't believe the, the piece was ever painted. It was purchased from an older man who kept it in his garage. It was covered in grease. The grease took me a long time to get off. So um, yeah, mostly on the bottom, some on the top, and there's a lot of like permanent wood damage because of this grease. So the piece is in two pieces. Um, and a lot of times these Hoosier cabinets had porcelain tops. Mine originally probably had a zinc coated steel top. And the reason they would have used zinc, and this is zinc, the reason they would have used zinc is because it's like food grade metal and it was very popular at the time. When we got it, it did not have this metal. I had the metal cut and made for me by a man, by a welder. It was $150 for just the metal and so um, he attached it to my top here and actually the top slides out hopefully oh well <laughs> the top is supposed to slide out but I actually have a huge chunk of wood missing on the side so I won't pull it out but yeah it this would have pulled out so that you would have a large work surface and it does pull out if you squeeze it the right way so I had that redone and then on the bottom you can see I have one door and three cabinets and my door is in very bad condition. The um, veneer is loose. I have all the original hardware. This one says Hoosier patent um, like 2 to 1910. February 22nd, 1910, something like that. I don't know. Um, so yeah, the hardware is all original. And um, it originally would have been like the silver plated, nickel plated, but it's actually like copper underneath. And so on some of my, um, on some of my hardware, you see that the plating is missing. So what I believe to have happened is that someone bought this piece and was going to fix it up or they the person who owned it started to fix it up and they started on the top piece and so the top piece all of the hardware was removed things were like misplaced whatever so i'm i am missing a few things but maybe whoever was trying to fix it up stripped the plating by accident so yeah i have these original 
pools. And on the inside of my cabinet, I have one original shelf, but there would have been a second one here and you can see on the wood where that second one hung. So I do not have that shelf, but I would have had one. And then in my cabinet, um, the I replaced the bottom and just put like shelf liner on some wood, but my bottom was totally rotted out. On the inside, you can see these long brackets that would have held a wooden, wooden sliding shelf, which I do not have. I would love to have that made someday. So yeah, there's inside. The drawers, I have three of them. This is like the silverware drawer. Here's just a second wood drawer. And the bottom one is the bread drawer and it does have a metal bottom, but not a metal top. And I don't know if a metal top would have been with this bread box. Like I said, this is a very early Hoosier cabinet. This is before they got really fancy. And so I have not seen one of these out in the world. And if I have seen any Hoosier cabinets that looked anything like mine, they had three doors at the top. I do not have three doors at the top. I have two doors and three drawers to the right. I have seen cabinets with two doors and four drawers, but none that have two doors and three drawers at the top. So if you know anyone or if you have a cabinet like this, please let me know what would have happened. But I think this was just a very, very early model of a Hoosier cabinet. And if you remember from the hardware, the hardware was patented in 1910, yet I have a placket that says 1906. So that's really interesting. Um, I don't know if this was like one of the very first ones to come off the line. Maybe it was custom built. Were Hoosier cabinets custom built in 1910? I don't know. I mean, was this bought from Newcastle or was it bought from a dealer? I, I truly don't know. So if you know anything more about it, let me know. So my cabinet has these two big doors at the bottom, like most cabinets. And I have a latch up here that opens it. And there's the inside of my cabinet. And you can see I have a lot of the um, resources. So here would have hung the sugar bin. I have the sugar bin, but it's in extremely poor condition. Here's my sugar bin. At least I have it. I'm really glad that I do have it. And the sugar would have hung from the door like so. You can see my shelf is all bent up. It's extremely rusty, extremely worn. And um, it looks like someone has already tried to weld on these parts, but it didn't stick. So, and this one still actually has the hornet's nest on it and inside of it, but my sugar bin would have hung like that. And you can see the wear marks on my cabinet where it was attached for a very long time. So I would have had this, oops, I would have had this shelf and I have the little metal piece that would have went like this. And then I would have had a second shelf down here and you can see the marks where it would have attached. So I'm missing one of these metal shelves and I need that attached. I also just need the whole thing pounded out of which I cannot do. Um, I had to replace I replaced the ooh, that's loud. I had to replace the bottom half of the back. So the back was in two pieces, two panels on the back. The top one was okay. The bottom one was very bad. So I removed it. I pulled all of the nails out. I kept, I cleaned the nails and I kept the nails. All the hardware I kept. I did not buy any new hardware, no new nails, no new screws, nothing. So I pulled that out. I put I got a piece of oak cut and I attached it to the back. Um, I still need to oil it and I may stain it. I'm not sure yet right now. I'm just kind of leaving it as it is. Um, this is a gift for my mom. So I, maybe she wants to um, stain it, paint it, I'm not sure. But it has a new back. I have the flower sifter and I have, here's the, so I took off the little sifter because my sifter is super chewed up. But at least I have it, right? So it's very chewed up. I'm thinking I can just cut out the um, mesh and just have something new attached. 
Also, this um, I had to remove all of the accessories hanging from the back. So um, this would have hung like so. And then I also have the rolling pin um, things that would have went there. And on this door, I have these little hooks. I have a meat hook is what it appears to be of some kind. It came with a piece. And for um, the piece came with like a baggie of just a bunch of like junk, which included like these nails. I had no idea where these went. These go here. And it came with like this pile of shards of wood. And originally I thought that this would attached the top piece to the bottom piece because there's here's a shard and there's a shard missing so I thought okay maybe it was some way to attach it but no there isn't there the exact that's exactly how the top piece sits on the bottom it sits uh so I'm thinking about like what were these used for and they're very thin and I'm looking at my cabinet door and I see that it has wear marks I know that there was a shelf here I don't have the shelf but I see that it was thin wear marks of wood. And I thought, hmm, I wonder if these shards of wood was that shelf. And believe it or not, the nail, the original nails are still in this piece of wood and they line up to the holes in the wood. Here is my internal shelf. So I have the two original pieces of trim for that shelf. This one is in good condition. This one has broken off. So hopefully someday I can work with a carpenter to have something made. That is what would have went on the shelf. And that shelf would have had a bottom. Well, this piece of wood came with a shelf, or it came with a cabinet, but it was attached in the back like this. And so I thought it was a back shelf. Well, I remove it because I had to redo the back, blah, blah, blah. And I'm looking at this piece of wood thinking that it goes in the back and realizing that no, there was never a shelf there. It was always for a rolling pin. And you can see the curves in my trim where the rolling pin, pin sat. So I'm thinking, I wonder if this piece of wood is part of the shelf and there's nails coming out of it. There's these circles of where the six original seller's glass spice jars sat. Um, I didn't sand it. I just cleaned it up because I think that's super cool. And this is the exact width of this door. So my cabinet would have attached to like this. Da -da -da, and I have the shelf. It's not one piece, it needs to be fixed, but nonetheless, I have it. So yeah, um, here's the top of my cabinet. I have cleaned up the hardware. Um, there's my flower bin. And you access the flower bin up here. Here is one side of the other side of the cabinet with our cat food. And here are my three drawers. The three drawers came with two of these filing cabinet tools. I don't have a third one. Um, and these were in a like plastic baggie. So each of the door, each of the drawers are the same. They are metal. They are metal um, drawers, and they all have a lid. And so that is really cool. So it was used for storage. I'm gonna say that mine was used for coffee, oats, and who knows, some kind of sunflower seed. So um, yeah, I have not seen a Hoosier cabinet out in the world that has two doors and three drawers. So if you know of anything about this piece, um, like I said, 1906, it has a placket. 1910 the hardware was um, patented and then at the top um, you can see I have a lot of damaged trim up there um, and I'm missing my Hoosier cabinet um, like major plaque like that goes at the front that says Hoosier cabinet um, I found a reproduction one online um, I bought it and it's in the mail so yeah and I thought another really like just to speak of like what kind of condition this piece was in um, if you can see on my trim piece it has all of these like holes scuffs, wear marks. Um, I pulled this nail, which is the size of my hand. I mean, it's like three or four inches. I pulled this out of the top of my trim. And I'm guessing that what someone had done is they had nailed 
the top piece of the furniture into the wall and they just nailed it straight through the trim work instead of just knowing like, oh, it rests on the bottom. No, I pulled this, I guess this is a roofing nail. Look how dirty my hands are. I pulled it out of the front. So this piece, or the latest part of its life, it was not well taken care of. And um, yeah, I've refinished quite a bit of furniture in the past. This has been a big project. Um, so yeah, I got a lot of inspiration from YouTube. There's a really great Facebook page called Give Your Wife a Hoosier Cabinet. Um, they had a lot of answers for me a lot, and they answered my questions. Um, so yeah, if you like this, let me know. If you have any comments or questions, write them down below. Um, and again, if you have a piece like this, let me know. I want to know more about it. It's only, you know, joined my family for since the last like five years, but it's, you know, over 114 years old. Um, and that's just really astonishing. So I hope you like my video.